Producing this film was a journey that began for me three years ago when I traveled with a friend to a rural village in southwest China. I still remember how the villagers welcomed me in to live with them, fed me, and they gave me a bed to sleep on that was better than their own. To this day I carry with me a vivid memory of a people who, while they lived far below any standard of poverty, were incredibly rich in their kindness and generosity. But there was one thing very wrong with what I saw in this remote village. In an attempt to support their livelihoods and in amidst unstable economic times and scarce water resources, they used plastic film mulch to grow corn. The corn helped increase their income to pay for such things as health care fees and their children's school expenses, but the inability to collect and dispose of the plastic mulch after harvest was polluting their environment and endangering their health as well as the health of their livestock. Having very little knowledge about what plastic mulch was at the time, I was eager to find solutions. I thought that when I returned home that I would find answers of how in America we do not burn plastic mulch, we recycle it and that quite possibly how I might adapt American solutions to benefit developing countries. If this film achieves anything at all, it illustrates how wrong I was that U.S. agricultural practices are any better than those found elsewhere. Even still, there is hope and with effort we can give ourselves options for tomorrow. I dedicate this film to the villagers of Sichuan province because without the memory of them, my research would have never taken me down this long, unending trail of plastic. I don't think people, most people probably don't think at all about plastic, mulch, in print. When people think of the farm, they, they think of the images that are sold to them on packaging. You know, and they see this little farmhouse and little, some acres and a couple of animals. And that's not what agriculture really is anymore, but people really think it is, probably. They don't understand that there's probably thousands and thousands of acres of plastic out there that are growing these crops that they wouldn't even recognize it as a farm if they saw it. Well, plastic mulch is really any kind of sheet film that uh, covers the soil. Uh, it does play uh, a very big role in agriculture right now, even for myself. Um, it's sort of a, a, I guess, a lesser evil that we have to accept. It, it does allow us to to use less of other resources and to achieve our results and to be economically viable, which supports the whole system of the organic farmer. So it's a positive thing in that it helps our production, but it's also a negative thing. And that's why I'm concerned about the concept of sustainable agriculture, because even organic agriculture, we use a tremendous amount of inputs like plastics that aren't truly sustainable. People have been using plastic mulch for a while now. It's sort of the accepted technique. Um, it works and it works well and um, you know it's cheaper and it's you know plastic mulch is marketed to farmers pretty heavily. They also retain moisture. Now I use them in, and a lot of farmers use them in, connect, in uh, connection with drip irrigation and that greatly reduces the amount of water that goes on to the uh, plants and which has tremendous consequences all down the natural resource spectrum. And so it really conserves water, um, so that's a vital role as well. That's the problem, is they don't have an option. We don't take very much of it, it has to be pretty clean. The farmer usually doesn't want to deal with it. It's usually in a lump mess in his field after they've, they've stripped it off the crops. It tends to shred and break, so it's not something that's easy even for the farmer to handle. It's much easier for him just to, to light a torch to it. It's never something that you can just easily roll up and pull off the ground. You know, I, I, you'll, you, you'll go to fields that have used plastic mulch and you will undoubtedly always find plastic left over and it stays there forever. The things that make us like them, they're durable, well then they don't break down even though they lose their uh, usefulness on the farm, uh, disposing of them is a humongous 
problem? They have three options, burning it, burying it, or sending it for disposal. So the reality is, and the numbers support, that most of the farmers will burn it. And that's, you think that's around Oregon? That Nationwide. You know, it's people trying to diversify their operations and grow things that aren't necessarily adapt to grow in certain regions, but I mean, how do you tell a farmer not to grow something that they think they can make money on? I don't think you can uh, truly be uh, profitable on a sort of family sustaining level, make a significant income in this day and age without some kind of, of enhancement and the plastic mulch right now is the answer to that question. One thing uh, that if the true costs were calculated into plastic as it is now, I think if those, if those true because it's already subsidized, that whole industry, the petrochemical industry is heavily subsidized and has been for the past 50, 60 years. And, it, and the disposal of that and the costs of mitigating pollution and if all that was really incorporated into plastic, it already would be too expensive to use probably. And if we, if we could recognize that truth, we might be a little more interested in the alternatives. I certainly believe they could figure out how to do it. And, and we could have plastics that are based more on plant-based materials as they're doing with corn-based products now. And, and so, you know, there are solutions out there or even how to break down plastics you know, finding the right enzymes and microbes that can digest the plastics for us and recycle them or however it may be the right approach. We're just not putting the effort behind it to give us really what we need. If you go to agricultural conferences, that is a problem nationwide and they are desperately looking for a technology that can use the plastic films and in particular the mulch grades. I mean, beyond the sort of natural, you know, compost and things like that, um, there's, there's paper mulch and that's, that's what I used this past season for the first time. Well, I think people have probably been using uh, organic debris of various kinds for a long time to get the functions of mulch, which is water retention and weed, reduced competition for weeds. People use straw, um, people use leaves, um, people use composted items, and we use a lot of straw at the student farm. We have a new technology that we hope to have online by the end of this year that will convert plastic to, back to synthetic crude oil. And at that point in time, it will open up the mulch market. I won't say completely because it is still so hard to handle and get out of the field. When we talked to farmers, one of the criteria they really wanted to see out of an alternative mulch type was the ability for the mulch to retain uh, soil heat. And so that's what we're doing here in this field plot. We have sensors under each of the different types of mulches. The sensor itself records the temperature throughout the duration of the experiment at set intervals. And this mulch here is a prototype mulch that is made up of uh, waste wool and flax fiber. In these bins we've composted for a period of about 10 weeks the different mulch types. And uh, at this point we've just now started to take the mulch types out of the containers they all are in a type of nylon mesh bag with a number on them. And then we're going to um, see the difference in the weight um, from before to after the experiment to determine how much is biodegraded. In these styrofoam containers, we have uh, soil and then the tops covered with the different mulch types. And every week we take out a little bit of the soil. We essentially bake it in an oven and that way we can see which mulches are retaining more moisture uh, than, than others. I made this film because I stumbled upon a secret, a secret that was too disturbing to keep to myself.
The use of plastic does give us more food and more types of food throughout the year while also conserving water and agriculture. There's no question that plastic provides a lot of advantages in giving us more food throughout the year of different types and as well it saves a lot of water in agriculture but it also causes in the disposal of burning it a lot of cancer causing dioxins and a lot of it ends up filling up our landfills. The world's farmers need alternatives to plastic mulch and farmers need you to support research institutions so that we have options for tomorrow. The consumer has a lot of power to say not buy tomatoes when they're not in season and by eating seasonally we can reduce the use of plastic mulch. We as consumers also need to support those farmers who practice responsible agriculture. I envision a day when we reach the end of this trail of plastic, an end of plastic mulch waste in the U.S., around the world, and for a small rural village in southwest China.